let us all that we can to build a better future. I actually have a story for the people. So oh, what's going on? There we go. Thank you, Daniel. So what is going on? So um, this is in response towards remember that story that I read yesterday about that BS brag, humble brag post oh, from yeah. MSDNC. That, that, that was funny. That uh, was so funny. And thank you, E. Heller, if you're still in the live stream chat, for bringing this to my attention as well. Uh, again, Case Study QB actually had an upload a longer version of this. Um, and I want to play all three videos because, again, this is Bernie Sanders demanding, again, we need more direct cash payments. U universal basic income is a necessity at this point. We need to have it. Um, the rest of the world has figured it out. We're the only country that has not figured it out. Let's play all these videos back to back, and then I think we should get some short responses to it because we are running short on time. So let's play Bernie all Sanders videos. from the state of Vermont. He is leading a group of progressive Democratic senators demanding $1,200 stimulus checks be included in the next relief bill. Um, Senator, we've heard your impassioned argument. Help us understand how many other senators have you convinced to support these stimulus checks? Any Republicans Wilson. on board? Yes, I think there is one, but uh, Senator uh, Holly uh, indicates that he is support part of of a twelve hundred dollar uh, per person uh, direct uh, payment and six hundred dollars or five hundred dollars for children. Uh, I think the Democratic caucus is ready to go, go forward on that. Yesterday, I sent out a letter uh, with five other senators, and I think we can have virtually all of the United States uh, Democratic senators on board. The question now is whether or not Mitch McConnell is going to turn his back, as your report just indicated, on the incredible suffering that the American people, the working people, are now experiencing. Unemployment high. We have a record level of hunger in America. Millions of people are facing evictions. This is an emergency. Congress has got to respond aggressively to help working families. You know, Stephanie, I always get a kick. Here in Washington, when we go to war, there's endless amounts of money. Tax breaks for billionaires, endless amounts of money. Corporate welfare, endless amounts of money. When children are going hungry in America today, suddenly we don't have enough money. That's crap. That's wrong. And if we have got to stay here throughout Christmas, which is the last thing in the world that I would want to do, we are going to stay here because we are going to make sure that struggling working families in this country get the help they desperately need. Senator, I'm not agreeing with you fundamentally, but I want to talk to you practically. You've been the lead sponsor of 422 bills during your 30 years in Congress, but only seven of them have become law. Given that, that record problem. and how dire things are, as you just laid out, do you need to find another lane? No, that's what I got to. Here? I don't think that's the issue, Stephanie. I mean, you can ask me how many other senators have passed significant legislation in recent years all right let's play the next video and again every how that, yeah you know she, she said i don't agree with you well that's because you're in your little ivory tower lady what, what when does when does they what have they ever said that about anything the closest that we've got is a uh, wolf blitzer going hey what about poor or what about homeless people yeah and, and, and that's and, not even close to that and when wolf blitzer kind of gets there like, you know things yeah. are terrible and, she's, and this is literally like sanders is making a point she's like okay let me undermine you by a voting record when you're the amendment king, not the law king. So we're going to also screw you on a thing, even though you've passed more amendments to what bills what, than she, she, any she, other person that's in Congress. But yeah. we're going to ignore that. Let's let's play that next video. Yeah. You could name post offices and so forth and so on. Some of the legislation that I've worked on, the veterans bill, for example, has been very significant in passing. But the issue right now is... Is the United States Congress going to stand up for working people or not? And I am doing my best to rally not only Democrats, but Republicans uh, as well. Now, as you may know, the proposal that came out of the White House uh, just yesterday talks not about $1,200 per person, but 600 That's unacceptable. And by the way, they want to do away with all extended unemployment benefits. And that is also unacceptable. As your report, your very excellent report indicated, all over the world, Countries are responding to the pain that working families are experiencing. We have got to do the same. This economic disaster is directly linked to the health crisis. Millions of yeah. Americans, not millions, we've got people going to work sick every single day because they don't have right. paid leave, because they're hourly millions, workers. So millions of Americans. Should the government consider leave. either forcing businesses or the government itself step in and offer paid leave? 
because it's only worsening the spread that sick people are going to work every day because unfortunately they're making the decision, put food on the table for my kids or go to work sick and risk, risk spreading this thing. Well, Stephanie, as the report, the previous report before you got on indicated, Benji indicated, we are unique among industrialized countries. Let's be clear. We are the only major country on earth not to have paid family and medical leave. So if you're sick today, maybe you have symptoms of the coronavirus and your choice is not getting a paycheck or going to work. You know what? You got to feed your kids. You're going to go to work. And by the way, it's not only paid family and medical leave. We are the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people as a human right. And if there's anything that I hope this terrible, terrible pandemic is showing the American people is how far behind we are other countries around the world in taking care of our children, taking care of the unemployed, taking care of the elderly, taking care of the sick. We're the richest country in the history of the world. So I'm just going to make a very small point that I'm going to let everyone else... So I just want to point out that her original point was you're not good at passing bills, which is an irrelevant thing, especially since most of his time he's been an independent, mm -hmm. which so. So, yeah, of course, that's why he's the amendment king, not the law king. That should be Nancy Pelosi, by the way. But she that she starts with you haven't passed all these bills. Also, why haven't we passed a bill about. Family paid family leave. He's like, I, I wish that his response was, hey, you know those bills that you said I was really bad at passing? Well, the thing you just asked, that's one of the ones I tried to pass. You're going to have to ask Nancy Pelosi. If he doesn't say Nancy. Kira. Oh, I'm having a conversation about um, Stephanie's dress in wow. the chat right now, <laughs> which I think is fabulous. But, you know, and uh, there's some funny stuff going on in there about that. Anywho, um, yeah, so I, I did think it was funny how she brought that up. Um, if you go back, because I went back and watched the video again, because there's a point where she wants to interrupt him, right? And then Bernie does what Bernie does and keeps going and, and totally, you know, plows her over. Um, but at the point when he said um, the thing about, you know, we have, uh, you, you know, but if, if, if children are going hungry, then, oh, all of a sudden we don't have any money. And he said, that's crap. And then she went to jump in and he continued going. So I'm wondering, there's a part of me that's just like, I wonder if that's what she was going to say that he, she's like fundamentally disagrees with. And then the whole switching of conversation is a complete obfuscation of what he's actually saying. Because if you notice, they never actually go back to what his initial point was like, which is basically like, oh, if we want tax breaks, oh, if we want national defense spending, we get it and we find the money. But if we want to get health care for people or if we want to get you know money in people's pocket, suddenly it's like, poof, where all the money go? And um, it, it was a complete obfuscation of what he was actually saying. Um, and yeah, I mean, I also think in, in a way, so if I'm going to listen to what her obfuscation was, in a way, like, you know, Bernie's final, I don't know if this was in the third video or the second video, and I don't think we played the third one yet. Yeah, we'll he calls for Democrat. What's that? We'll, we'll, we'll play it right after you. Third oh, right on, right on. Because I think my next point is inside of that video, but I'll go ahead and make it anyway. He says that, um, you know, basically like, well, what do we need to do? We need Democratic leadership to stand tall. And, um, and you know, I, I don't know if this is necessarily the point Stephanie was making, but in my mind, I'm just thinking like, okay, yeah, like, that's gonna happen. Like, on what, on what, on what planet? you know, are, you know, will the Democrats actually stand tall on this issue? You know, their, their negotiating skills are the worst I've ever seen. And, um, and, and so it's like, okay, like maybe there is another way or lane as Stephanie would say, but yeah, it's, it's, this is a disaster. Actually, just really quick, that other lane, I know what that other lane is. Bernie, shut up. You're making us look bad. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Let's go ahead and play that final video. 92 million people today are uninsured or underinsured. That is beyond belief. That is why, in my view, we've got to move to Medicare for all single payer to guarantee health care to all people. American people can't afford to get healthy with uh, Speaker Pelosi and Minority Leader Schumer rejecting 
um, the latest package. Where do they go from here? What is your advice to them for the next move? We don't want these talks to stall out. It's to stand tall. Do what the American people want. And what the American people understand that in a democratic, civilized society, we cannot continue to have more desperation out there today than any time since the Great Depression. What the Republicans are proposing is grossly unsatisfactory. You know, you remember, it wasn't so many months ago the Democrats were saying, we need $2 trillion. You recall that? They reached an agreement with Mnuchin. $1.8 trillion. Do you know how much new money is in this package? Do you happen to know? It's $350 billion because they're shifting $350 billion because they're shifting $500 billion or $600 billion from the unused money in the CAS program. That's nothing. But Senator, so we got to so people in those Republican. Oh, I'm sorry. Please. <laughs> All right. We just got to stand tall. That is unacceptable. And we cannot leave here unless we get twelve hundred dollars for every worker and we get extended unemployment. We get adequate aid for states and cities. This country is facing a crisis. We have got to respond accordingly. Yeah. People aren't just suffering in Democratic led states. People are suffering in red states in blue states in all of the United States of America. And we need to do something to help them. Senator, thank you so much for joining me today. Always good to see you. Stay healthy. Uh, thank you. I was talking to her. First of all, everyone's talking about her clothes. It's I'm not even really a full Democrat. I'm a I'm a Republican Democrat well, and this, a Republican. That's what that shirt re- well, yells to me. Well, Daniel, again, so everyone, in case you might have missed it, this is the same stuff. I Rule think it's a cute dress. Article. <laughs> yes, that's her. That's no, her. Which her article? Headlines. Which article? That article that I read yesterday, folks. It was, oh, okay. I didn't watch yesterday. Sorry. She was humble bragging humble about brag. how she got time off humble to brag. go into COVID and how she caused her humble hairdresser brag. to lose half a month's salary because she freaked her out. Mm-hmm. And now and she the, wrote this in a oh, public. No, go check it, out the video. It, it was what, 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 I, I got it best. Please check out this clip on our Heartlands Media YouTube channel. Check it out after the show. Yeah, it's. I did not realize that was her. Right? <laughs> uh, it's, well, it, Daniel, it's it, see, look, those are yeah, images right here. Stuff yeah, it's the stuff same. Th- okay, so <laughs> the, fun, the thing is that you will never see a anchor on TV, a propagandist on TV, ever do that to any other politician that's in the fold. She literally, Bernie's like, hey, you know, we don't have money for this, but we have this money for other stuff. Yeah, but Bernie Sanders, you haven't passed any bills. Also, this there's a bad situation we're in. We need a bill for it. I really wish someone tried to pass it. This, she is, um, she's, she's pathetic. I mean, I, I do not like anything about, especially now that I realize that she's the one that wrote that opinion piece where mm-hmm. she was humble bragging about how oh, oh, we can I go to separate houses. Now. Yeah, Kira, take a take a look at that video after. Yes. You'll, you'll, uh, it's, it's, oh. Yeah, again, this Don't is the same stuff. Don't people have PR people? I mean, come on. Well, well, here's the thing. She she wrote in that article that I read yesterday that you know her husband was ha- got COVID and then you know he stayed in their New York apartment. She went to a mother home, their town then, home, their, their town home where they, she stayed they in the garage. The cars. <laughs> her neighbors and family delivered food, but then she had to tell her dress hair dresser who she got sick that you know who hey she thought she got sick. who she thought she got sick but the hairdresser had to basically almost go into near Pulled the kids yeah, out of school yeah. for two weeks mm-hmm. uh, stopped working for two weeks and lost that money oh man it's just such a hold hypocrite. on uh, sure are we hurts. having some mic problems mm-hmm. no uh, just... someone said it's good. i think i'm really loud and you guys might be a little bit more quiet, but yeah. um, I heard your guys' audio go up. So I think we are okay now, but okay. let we're us very, know. We're very angry. We're very angry. Okay, well, uh, all right. Nonetheless, as a final note for this story, when it comes down to pundits, especially on MSDNC, you know, Stefan Rule, you, you were asking for solutions and, and things. Well, Bernie was explaining it to you. It's called universal basic income. I know that's for that's for working class families. Medicare for all, which we could all benefit from. Student debt forgiveness, medical debt forgiveness. Now, the thing is, you're safe in your ivory tower looking down on us. But remember what I just said in the last article that I read yesterday. The poor folks, the working class. We're looking right back at all of you and your fantastic friends in that ivory tower. And the thing is, you guys have a platform to talk about UBI and Medicare for All and why our Congress is too inept. But see, you're too busy writing a humble brag article. So 
on behalf of the working class families and people who are struggling and to the third and to all of us who are at risk of losing everything please when you're asking for a solution listen to the people who are trying to bring in real ideas because maybe maybe you could use your platform for to help build a better future but maybe that's a bridge too far maybe it's something too uncomfortable for you because obviously you were not paying attention 